All right, what's going on, guys? We got my boy Trevor here. Trev, say what up? What's up, guys? Yes, sir. We're going to go over his journey just to inspire you guys and show you what's possible with the skill of copywriting. And hope you guys enjoy. Take some value from this. So, Trev, man, what's good? How much, man? Just been cruising e com. Yes, So, sir. The e-com niche. So I guess the first thing is, how much you make with copywriting this month? uh, over 4K, I think it's like 4.3K. 4.3. My man has been lighting up the wins chat this month. This is uh, this is Trevor's month for sure. Yeah, it's been a big month. It's been really cool. Um, and honestly, too, it's kind of interesting. Like, all my stuff has all come from inbound. Like, it, no outbound at all. It's That's all inbound. sick. So, And how did you how did you like facilitate that? so there were like I'm kind of in the clothing brand space on Twitter because I run a clothing brand, and then just like money Twitter in general. I've always been in that space for like the past two years. I just started getting active in it. I'd probably say the past year, but. There was a mutual I had on there. His brand is doing like 40K a month. And I took a look at his emails and I'm like, I could do way better here. So I just sent him over some free, a free sample. I broke down like what he's doing currently and then how I would do it differently. And I didn't, it was super non needy. Like, hey, here's this. You can implement this. And he loved it. So I did it for free. I made him an entire abandoned checkout flow for free. Great. Um, so, After that, he shouted me out on Twitter. That was my payment, was just like a quick testimonial. Nice. And then I've gotten, I got an inbound from that. And then another inbound actually came from a video I made on TikTok like two months ago, where I was like, this is how I set up ads for my clothing brand. And some kid hit me up who's doing 10K organically. And when I say organic, zero ad spend, doesn't even have an email list, doesn't have an email pop-up, doesn't have an SMS list. And he's doing 10K a month with his his business um, purely off just like IG and TikTok posts, which is insane. Um, so he came in because he wanted to run ads. And then I was super non-needy on the first call, gave him a front, bunch of free game up front because I've been running ads for over a year. So I gave him a bunch of free game. And he's he was like, oh, like, how would I work with you? Like, I think next week I could do it. I was like, okay, man, just let me know. I was super non-needy. Um, which drove even more curiosity. And then literally the sales call I had yesterday with him was easy peasy. Um, locked him in for 2K. OK, baby, Sir. 4K retainer, too. Yep. So 2K Yeah. setup just because I'm doing email and ads. So to me, ads aren't that strenuous. Um, Yeah. you kind of just, it's not too bad. Emails is a lot of work up front, especially if you're doing all the flows, especially with e-com because you have to design the emails. Hmm. 2K up front. 1k retainer so Well, nice, man. Congrats on the big month. And I know this is just the start um, for the e-com wizard, as we call him. But yeah let's let's take it back because this is not where it started out. Um, no. kind of give me how the heck did you find, I guess, copywriting to start with and then my stuff? bro so my journey with copywriting has been very weird um so to say the least It's always, I think it's been God always just like trying to put it in front of me and me not listening to what he's trying to tell me. And so many self-doubt issues. I've always had a ton of self-doubt um, just throughout my entire life. It's super weird. But um, basically, I went down the copywriting rabbit hole about two years ago um, when it started popping up on social media being like the new money-making method. I was like, I've always been a good writer. You know, I've always gotten Do eight. it. and whatever so i've always been good at writing i always liked writing growing up especially creative writing um is my favorite so like when brands give me full creative control makes it way more fun so Yeah. but basically yeah i went down that rabbit hole and i was like convinced like because i was still working on my clothing brand i'm like oh, i don't want to stretch myself too thin so i'll just use all this information for my clothing brand then i became like an email nerd absolutely love email i've been loving email forever And then just magically, I decided to do, you know, freaking emails for e-com brands because, dude, I had so much shiny object syndrome coming in everything. When I found KJ's content, he opened the aperture for me. The sense of what is possible. With, I was like, wait, copywriting is everything, dude. I can do this, 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 this. And then obviously the info product space is growing massively right now. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm the next, I'm the next Ben Bader or something in this space. So. Then I wanted to do info products and I wasn't finding any luck with that. Um, and then I started doing e-com, I think 
in August and I've already found like a ton of, a ton of growth in that already just because that's my roots. I have so much experience in it. Mm. Profitable experience. Okay. Profitable. I run profitable ads. I run really, I made over a hundred K in emails. Like, Heck yeah. you know, it was all right in front of me. I just had to get that proper guidance. Yeah. I mean, I still remember us on the old coaching calls literally saying like, dude, just do e-com. Like what? <laughs> um, we... So crazy when you said that too, because I've been praying about that for so long. Yeah. Could I just do this? I'm, and I even went back in my journals like after that day and I was like, dude, I've been writing about this for a long time. Should I do this? And then KJ randomly in a call, like it was out of the blue. We were talking, I don't even remember what we were literally, talking. It was like an example. Like I was just like, for example. Yeah. And you're like, Trevor, why aren't you working with e-com brands, bro? Like you literally know e-com so well. Like what are you doing? And I was like, that's the sign. That's the signal. That's and it. then I committed to that. So crazy. Yeah. And those of you guys watching, I mean, this is something we talk about a lot in kind of the selectivity, the niche part of copy lead is, you know, there's so many ways to make money with copywriting because it is everything, but you have to choose a lane. And it's all about finding the lane that you're passionate about and that you feel like you can be good at. Like I chose YouTube. Was I a good YouTuber? Absolutely not. But I just love the game of YouTube. I love watching YouTube. And so for me, going to help YouTubers who had courses was like, just that was the perfect route. And same thing for Travis, like he was already interested in e-com. So it's all about finding something you guys already love. You don't have to be good at it at all. You just have to love it. And that passion will carry you. Dude, that hurricane is going crazy. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that passion will carry you and that'll give you the drive you need to get good and to make money. But so yeah, kind of tell us Trev, you know, you've been on a journey for a while now, even before joining Copy Elite, but what, what kind of changed being in Copy Elite, uh, not to turn this into a sales pitch, but like what was the most beneficial parts from that that other people could take away? Um, honestly, to me, it's almost like a competitive nature. Like when I see the wins chat, I'm like, why isn't that me? And then it makes you like, okay, this dude can do it. I can do it. Like there's literally, we have Frederick who's 15 <laughs> and he's cruising right now. Monster. He's an absolute monster. I see him in the way. I'm like, dude, like, why not you when you're you're in there? But I think also copy elite, you know, I feel like there's a lot of people, even myself included, where I want to have all the information. I want to know everything that I need before I do something, which is it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. For everybody at home, like that's a good thing. And it's a very bad thing because it can put you in a spiral of just never ending information collection. And then you just never do anything. Yeah. Um. But for me, it like, like I said, it opened my aperture and provided me like everything I would ever need to know at, at a copy level to feel confident in it. And then also it's just like, honestly, I have everything. I can do it. Yeah. And it's just like, there's everybody's in there to help you. I get DMs now, like for e-com advice. Um, yeah, that's sick. Like, it's it's kind of crazy. And honestly, to me, it's not even so much the information that you pay for, it's the community. And I feel like that's something super slept on within, you know, online, the online info space is you're not just paying for the information, you're paying for the connections and the network. Because yeah. to be honest, not everyone that joins a course, and I'm speaking generally, is going to be super successful. But you're going to be, if you're one of them, and there's going to be other people that are super successful with it, now you have a network of winners and you guys can all help each other out. So, and I did, I mean, that's, We've already had guys scale up to 30K a month. Spoiler alert, he's doing even more now. I'll talk about that later. But uh, doing 30K a month who came back and hired copywriters to help scale even further. Like we have client competitions in there. It's just something about having that arena of competitive nature. And like you said about the self-doubt thing, it's a lot of a lot of people watching this video, I'm guessing, don't believe they can write copy that actually makes money. Even though they know that they can, like they've done the research, they have all the knowledge like you're talking about. But sometimes it takes seeing people just like you winning and seeing what they're doing every day and be like, well, dang, I can do that. Because yeah. I guarantee you there's people looking at you now who put, like you post in the windshield all month, they're like, man, I can do yeah. that, I'm sure. Because Trev, just, I watched Trev do it, like he wasn't doing anything like a couple months ago, now he's doing 4K, like, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a wild ride for sure. Because it's like, even when I started my clothing brand and I got to six figures with that business, like, you never think gonna you like never think it's gonna be you, because mm -hmm. like there's no difference between me and KJ, anyone watching this or anyone in that Discord group, bro. Like we're all just normal humans. No one's like 
freaking dude there's no special sauce at yeah. all yeah i always like to say the secret is there is no secret it's exactly what you, you need to be doing and i used to feel the same thing about iman when i hear him talk about making 10k a month and how that's not a lot of money i'd be like freak this guy like who is he know like i don't know is he special all this then you do 10 you're like oh it's really not that special you just need to take the right actions no and, it's, yeah it's not special, than that. <laughs> that's, that's i mean cool. i've hit I've hit a 10K month. My biggest month with my clothing brand was 46K. That's sick, dude. That's so so sick. we're trying to work back up to that because some things happen, but it is what it is. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, that's another thing I want to touch on too with this is like everyone out there watching this, you think money's going to fix your problems. It doesn't fix your problems mm -hmm. at all. I can promise you when I hit 46K with my clothing brand in one month, basically a weekend because it was a drop, <laughs> I didn't feel happy at all yeah. i was like, okay what do i like what's next like mm -hmm. i'm not satisfied whatsoever i made someone's salary in a weekend with my brand <laughs> and i wasn't happy and there was definitely journal entries from a year prior where i was sewing in my dorm room where i was like if i could just make 5k with yeah. my brand, i'll be good it's not gonna make you happy so you gotta when you go into this don't get too wrapped up in the numbers i would say that's what it's about man it's such a good such a good freaking word like it's why we talk it try to talk about god as much as possible on this channel and the raw channel probably mm -hmm. more the raw channel but like if you don't have a purpose for doing any of this it doesn't matter at the end of the day and this is also why you should choose something that you love to do yeah because i told my editor this as well he was thinking about launching a course and i was like dude do you want to make a course do you want to deal with fulfillment do you want to like have to help clients and coaching calls and he's like no i was like okay then don't don't do that just because it'll make you an extra 5k and he's yeah. like oh dude you're so right so i think um this is super good advice I mean, for people hearing it i've had the same dilemma with like my personal brand quote unquote for a while there like my clothing brand kind of took off just because of my tiktok and now i'm at a point where i hate making content i want to just live in the shadows and be a behind the scenes guy dude it's just not worth it to me yeah. i get zero satisfaction from it and while yes, it's a good thing to do, like if you gotta you gotta do it because you like it, bro. Cause if you go in with the wrong intentions, it's not gonna work out the way you think it is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, there's there's so much money to be made in any lane. In any lane. Like if you're the front of the if you're the face, you're the guy making videos. If you're on the back end, if you're like mm -hmm. just doing VSLs, I mean you can make so much money doing any any niche thing. Um, but what is going to make you the most money in the long run and the most joy is doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. and this is why people ask me how I make so many videos. It's like, dude, it's my gift. Like I love to freaking do it. God has made me to make videos. There's no other way I can post like three videos a day. There's no way. Like you can't force yourself to do that every day. You'll just burn out, but I love it. Um, yep. Whereas somebody else doesn't want to do that. And so they should be diving into e-com emails and like studying, man. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. What, what would you say is like the biggest, I guess to start with like info, like what's the biggest information that you've learned in the past couple of months that has helped you do this 4k? Cause I know a lot of people want to do that right now. Like they want, they wish they're making 4k off the copywriting. What do you think the biggest takeaways are that led you from doing like, you know, zero to doing 4k in the past couple of months? You, you're never going to be ready and you just need to jump. I've been, I've always said that dog, like it, the thing you need to be doing is, you already know what to do. Um, I mean, you could watch. I've even caught myself doing it. It's like, okay, dude, I've watched this module twice. Like, yeah, what am I doing? Like, I need to actually be doing this stuff, not, yeah. not you know, getting out on cheap dopamine because people also forget. Like, just because you join the a course doesn't mean success. You you still have to take action. And I know the dopamine rush is fire. Trust me. <laughs> but um. Look, dude, like you got to just do the work and it's very obvious what you need to be doing. And I will say I like points of the journey. You're going to just there's just no way to describe like it's literally in a sense, it's luck. It's just God blessing you. because, Like like I said, like I got this way off of doing one free piece of work. And then also the other some of the money came from a fitness client I have where I knew him because I was a video editing slave for a year yeah. where I was like busting my balls for one dude. And then he just, you know, outsourced me to other people and got me other clients. 
I was not getting paid very well at all, but mm -hmm. from the video editing day, so and we stayed in touch. So, you know, this was not an overnight journey. Um, <laughs> I know, I know a lot of people. Yeah, like we have. I think Ben. I mean, he started six months ago, or yeah, it's like eight months ago, and he's just doing well, brother. You're gonna have those stories, but like me and KJ, we've been at this for years, <laughs> Long years. Time. We've been at this for years, bro, and we're just now figuring it out. Yeah. Like some people. So if you're like sitting at home, like struggling, like what do I do? It's going to work out, but you have to take action, bro. You can't mm -hmm. sit there in the echo chamber all day. You have to do stuff. And a lot of it's going to be failure, but every time you fail, you learn that's not what you do. You do this and then you mm -hmm. just keep going, bro. Dude, I've been thinking about this all week. It's one of my favorite lessons that Sam Ovens has taught, but it's like your, your memory of the work you do goes down way before the effect of that work actually takes off. So it's like you forget these things that you've done, like the books you've read a year ago, these shorts you edited and learned this one tactic. Like you don't under, like you just forget how much you actually know. And that stuff comes into effect way later. It's like well, we created those resources for Copy Elite like four months ago, literally just grinded out one weekend, created these massive databases. And never in a million years did I think people would be using that to build confidence in their high value outreach 2.0 outreach. And people use that all the time now as assets. I, mm -hmm. I never thought that stuff would be anywhere useful like a year from now and now people are landing clients with it so it's like all this information you pick up the main thing is if you don't stop like if you just keep learning and keep trying new things like you said you just worked for free for a random guy or a terrible thing and all of a sudden next thing it leads to this client another connection then more clients like you just never know if you just work your tail off man yep and in the moment it felt like it was all for nothing too yeah yeah i remember when that client relationship ended um, and it needed to end low key just cause like I wasn't getting paid enough and that was a whole thing. But, um, I remember at the time I was like, dude, what do I do, bro? Like, like I'm cooked. I wasted all this time doing this one thing and it didn't work out. Um, uh, but it all ended up coming back in a way. It's weird. I I said this to my parents earlier in the year. Um, I said, I feel like God's shutting one door so he can open another Exactly. I didn't know at the time what that was going to be for. And then pretty soon after that, I stumbled upon KJ's content and then just kind of went down this lane. And then also like I reset with my clothing brand. We got a new drop coming and like, I'm super excited for it. Like a lot of things were shut so I could go do other things. Yeah. And like I told KJ before the call, like I just, um, I basically just left my last video editing client. Because I want to focus on this stuff more and I want to focus on my brand more and they're just draining me at this point. So sometimes you got to close things off mm -hmm. to find find other opportunities. So, no, oh, man, such a good word. It's like sometimes God wants to hand you something, but your hands are full and you got to let it go mm -hmm. before you can accept that that new thing. That's going to be even better in most cases. So well, that was a funny thing because I was debating dropping the video editing client and then I signed that client yesterday. It's just like, all right, dude. There it is. There, there it is. is. Like, I'm going. <laughs> like, it is what it is, bro. It's always going to work out. Yeah, man. And I kind of want to know, like, from your perspective, because you do, you've done so many things kind of like me in the past. Like, how valuable is copy in all this stuff? It's crazy because it, when I look like the aperture got open to me looking at everything i'm like wait this is everything i do like for my clothing brand at the time i was like wait i've done this like i did this with a script with my clothing brand i didn't really realize it was copywriting yeah. but it was and that was my best performing ad like i said i've always been pretty decent at writing and when i get full creative control and i can just do what i need to do like i know i can do this stuff and i know i'm like i even wrote it down this morning like i'm not as good as i think i am but i'm better than i give myself credit for and it's just like that applies to everybody like dude you can do this stuff like you can yeah. it's very possible so but yeah no um just yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's just a crazy journey dude i really hope people listen to that dude because i know there's people watching this thinking like i'm not good enough or i can't do this or i'm not smart enough and technically that's the only thing standing in your way is that belief that's it it and is it's the it's same thing griff said griff said it on the last interview the dude gave up like he literally quit it was like, I see these people winning in the wins chat. I, I can't do it. Gave up. Went to go play video games. Comes back, decides to lock in for one week, regardless of how he felt. He's like, you know what? I don't believe this, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do the actions. Boom. Big client. Rev share. Now I'm making 4K a month. It's like, 
none of us are anything different from you guys listening. I promise. Yeah. And to touch on that point too, it's like, I'll tell this story. This one's a little bit like I got massively depressed at the end of last year because my clothing brand thing started going wrong. I thought I knew everything. Like I said, like, you know, I'm not as good as I think I am, <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't want to listen to certain people. I had like a family friend at high up in marketing for big companies tell me like, Hey, you should probably do this. I was like, no, oh. you know, shut it down. So I, a lot of things just started happening with my company. It started falling off and like, Dude, I was so depressed. I felt like an absolute loser. Didn't want to do anything. Mm. But the difference between me and someone that doesn't make it is the fact that even though I was super depressed and I didn't want to be here, I still woke up every day and I still did things I didn't want to do. Yeah, I, I, There was not days where I just laid in my bed. Like I felt horrible about myself, horrible about the world. My mindset was horrible. <laughs> I thought nothing was ever going to work out for me. I thought it was never going to get better, but I kept going. So, I mean, I know there's someone out there where it's like, man, it sucks right now. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, bro, it does get better. And the thing is, is like, you might be depressed. You might hate yourself, but if you never stop going, if you just never stop showing up, there is just zero way nothing good happens. Like there's just zero way, like, you're not going to find something. You're not going to find success. Like if you just keep showing up. So if you take anything from this, bro, like just keep going, bro. I promise you it works out. That's it, man. And that's everyone's journey. You guys will see. Like no one yep. had just a straight shot to the top. It's just not how it works. One of my favorite Hormozy quotes is losers and winners are on the same path. Losers just quit early. Yep. It's like, if you guys are doing this, like don't quit, keep watching the videos, keep learning keep applying the knowledge, keep testing things, failing. And um, yeah, you'll end up making the 4K months and, and much <laughs> more. Man, that's just the start, honestly, for being, for being for real. But speaking of that, so Phil Centra, what's what's the plans for the rest of the year and next year? Kind of what's the what's the moves you're making? I'm going to get, I got to get back out on cold outreach. I've just been, you know, the goal doesn't care, but my excuse is I've just been swamped, but I know the yeah. goal doesn't care. Um, I need to just do it. Uh, cold outreach is definitely where I lack still. I still get nervous to this day to send DMs, to send emails. <laughs> um, it is what it is, though, and I just got to keep doing it. The more you do it, too, like, the better it gets in the mm -hmm. sense of, like, oh, okay, that wasn't bad, you know? It's really not that bad, dude. You're not going to die if you send cold outreach. It's yeah. fine. Um, but, yeah, no, I need to stop slacking on cold outreach so I can actually start getting clients. Um, but I know one of these guys is going to be a really good case study for me. And mm -hmm. from there, I'm going to be able to leverage that like no tomorrow. Um, and I mean, I already had another guy reach out to me on Twitter because of that shout out. Um, so we're going to readdress him in about one to two weeks. Cause he's got, he just paid 10 K for a meta ads course. So I get it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's some high ticket deals out there, boys. I <laughs> it's a lot of money, man. insane, insane. But, um, yeah, no, I'm going to do that. Stick with e-com, grow my clothing brand in the background as well. Um, that's the plan. It's a super, I always, my girlfriend always wants to know like what my exact steps are. I'm like, the plan is simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. You do the actions yep. and you just keep going. Like it's that simple. I'm going to work on e-com emails and Facebook ads and I'm going to scale my clothing brand. And that's that it, is my plan. So that's it. And you're at that stage where, man, it starts to get fun. It's like when you really produce results like you will for those clients, that's when things get out of hand because, like, you just start leveraging them and you get more clients. And then you learn a solid outreach strategy and then you just start shipping it, bro, and deciding as many as you want. Um, yeah, but it's like you said, you take the actions, you get the results. It just um, it helps to have – a community helps to have people to just spur you on to do that. Cause that really is kind of the biggest benefit is like when you have those guys who pick you up on bad days and who mm -hmm. inspire you when you're like, I don't even know if this is possible. Like, is this actually possible? And you see it win from somebody who just joined like, Oh yeah, I just made a grand. And you're like, Oh yeah, it definitely is possible. It's definitely <laughs> I'm just being possible. weird. Yeah. It's definitely possible. Honestly, one of my favorite parts about the, the community too is the coaching calls, especially yeah. Thursday coaching calls with Jason. Cause it's <laughs> literally just us shooting the shit about everything oh, and uh, a lot of good conversations there so <laughs> i was every time i was chasing like how's the call he's like bro it was great but it was weird <laughs> i was like yeah perfect. yeah about to say speaking of coaching calls 
I got one in just a little bit. So I'll probably have to go run and get ready for that. But dude, Trev, thanks for coming on and um, appreciate you sharing the wisdom and lessons God has given you in this journey. And I'm hoping it inspires others, but have anything for the boys? Honestly, just, I, it's my brand's motto. So I hope this isn't corny, but resilient are the prosperous boys. Just keep going. Yeah, that's it, man. Resiliency. Sometimes just being an absolute idiot, man. Like having like that idiotic consistency to continue doing something, even when you just, it's just not going anywhere. Um, when you got when you got people telling you you're like kind of crazy or like why do you work so much and stuff like that, bro? Like you're kind of on the right path. Yeah. I'll be honest, you're on the right path, bro. Yeah, if you don't have people questioning your moves, you're you're probably not doing something right. Um, <laughs> and it's yeah. gonna suck. I'll be honest, like it sucks. For, oh, it does suck. It it's, sucks for like it's bad. Like my girlfriend's like, what are we doing? You know, yeah. like. I'm like, dude, just trust me. I'm going to, I know I'm going to make this work, but it's just so hard, bro. Sometimes it's like, ah, I wish you could see what I I see, bro. Yeah, it is tough. But, you know, even if you guys, those of you who can't, um, can't join Copy Elite, like find community because we're not just saying that to sell the program. Like you, you need guys who are doing something like you because of that reason, because you're going to feel nuts. And when you have other people who are also in the same thing, you don't feel so nuts anymore. You're like, oh, this is fun. I got the boys. The world doesn't get it, but the boys do. So that's that's really what matters. So um, I hope you guys took away some value from this video. And uh, once again, show some love to Trev in the comments for coming on, sharing the story, inspiring you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Man, I appreciate it. Big time. Yeah, man. No problemo. I actually never thought I would be in one of these, but here we are. Bro, everyone says that. Literally every single person I do this with is like, dude, I never thought I'd be in one of these. That's what I'm saying. Like, no one's no one's like, everyone can do it because it's like none of us thought we were going to get here. <laughs> Literally, dude. That was like half of Griff's interview. I don't know if you watched it, but. I watched a little bit of it. I like watching that stuff like when I feel down because it's like mm -hmm. this dude did it, bro. This guy did it. I think they're so salesy and corny sometimes, but also, bro, they're so good because it's real. And if you have real people sharing, sharing like real results, then um, people get mad inspired. Like I had some guys on sales calls talking about that Griff interview. They're just like, man, I was slacking. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? I can do this. If he did it, I mean, I can do it. You almost got to get pissed off, bro. You almost got to yeah. get pissed off with yourself and your situation. And just like, because there's a lot of days I've, I'm like driving home from work. Or I'm at work and I'm like, bro, this this sucks. Like I need mm -hmm. to get out of here. So that's it, man. It's just uh it's all a game. Just enjoy it and keep keep playing hard. <laughs> yeah. How's your scaling plan going? Oh bro, we're it's stressful as frick, man. I'll be honest, like people just don't know what goes into this. I don't think anybody would even get into this if they knew what went into it. So maybe it's a good thing. Like, <laughs> Dude, I literally saw an interview with the founder of NVIDIA. You mm -hmm. obviously know NVIDIA. Yeah. And he was like, if we knew what we were going to have to do and sacrifice <laughs> and do to get to this point at that moment when we founded NVIDIA, none of us would have done it. No. 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 Dude, that's the thing. It's like at a point you get so high up on the mountain, you can't climb down. No. So you got to just keep going, bro, because that's how I am with this, this. It is so hard for me to quit stuff. I don't think you understand. Like, it was gnawing at me with this. this. And I was like, am I a bitch if I quit? Like, I can't quit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is so hard for me to quit stuff, but you kind of have to have that to do this stuff because when it gets bad, you got to just keep going, bro. You got to keep going. It's tough, dude. It is. It's tough. I don't know how anybody's an entrepreneur without God. That's what I don't understand. Like, I can't imagine doing this. I don't without, know. Bro. Without knowing, like, the Lord. That's why I've been laughing me. lately, too. I've been in, like, such a weird thing with my faith lately where I'm just like, bro, I, just, I don't even feel worthy right now. Like, I'm just like, dude, it's been tough. I need to get back get back into the, everything. Because, like, obviously I've been blessed because it's like those inbound leads aren't by mistake. Yeah. You no, know, I can't control that. And that's God putting that right in front of me and being like, take this. Mm. So, you know, it's it's crazy too, bro. But yeah, no, I definitely need to get back on my. I've been slacking for sure. So, 
I say, man, that's always always the main thing. It's like anytime I ever struggle with any problem, I just realize that it is always a faith problem. It's like mm -hmm. it manifests in a different way, and you think like, oh, I need to do this like action, but yeah. it ends up being a, a faith and just like lack of handing yeah, things of over trust. to God. Yeah, because I'm it's a I'm in a weird position right now where I just feel like overwhelmed in a sense where I'm like, I just don't feel worthy to be in my position. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. It's weird, bro. I just don't feel worthy to be where I'm at. And I'm like, okay, well, God still put me here. So okay. Dude, like, we got to keep going. You. And the answer is like, we're not. No. Like, not I think about all. this so much, man. Like, I deserve, I deserve death and like nothing. I don't deserve to have an amazing wife who oh. literally, I don't even know how God, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know why she even married. Like, dude, I was just a complete loser. Um, Dude, yeah. Like, I dude, yeah. yeah. When I was younger, dude, I was such an asshole. I don't know how my girl we've been dating for eight years, we're high school sweethearts. Dude, um, yeah, that's that's awesome. And it's like we've both done like some pretty bad stuff. And like <laughs> it is unreal, like how we're still together sometimes. Yeah. I'm just like you know, like it's not by accident, that's for sure. Cause I, I remember in high school I was so lonely. I kept praying to get a girlfriend, and then I got a girlfriend. <laughs> And it's still her. Yeah, so, it's just, it's, <laughs> so it's like God's like, dude. Bro, he is good. I kind of want to leave this in the video. I know it's like just raw, but yeah. I don't know. I'll think about it later. But I just, yeah. It's like people got to understand, man. Even when you make so much money, like it is nice. Like it really is. Like being able to buy like a microphone I've always dreamed of having or, you know, even like, yeah. like I'm, I'm excited for your drop because I'm going to buy some clothes. It's like if I was broke, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was broke, I wouldn't be able to do that just because yeah. I don't really need any more clothes, but it's dope and I want to support and I love them. So uh, well, I had a question about that. I was going to, if it's cool with you, I don't know how you feel about self-promotion, but I wanted to drop an early access for all the boys in the discord in case they wanted to cop anything. I didn't yeah. want to run that by you because I, I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> like, no, man, no, I think it's for me. It's, it's like, I know your heart behind it. When people are just trying to make a quick buck, I hate this stuff, but you care about this junk and i know because i bought one of your things like it's sick um and if it's like a genuinely good product like i love promoting that kind of stuff yeah and, uh, i also just feel like the the mission behind everything now is just like so much focused on like what we do mm. like a lot of people aren't going to understand like resilient are the prosperous they're just like yeah. give me my work bro but i'm like dude yeah. like this is so special to me but yeah i wanted to run that bio because i wasn't gonna <laughs> no dude i would love to I, i'll drop an announcement or something um but yeah just let me know what i need to say i'll drop an announcement because i feel like they'll they'll love that but i appreciate that dude i really do um but yeah i mean it's just been so cool this journey especially like coming across your content and stuff it's just wild how life works dog <laughs> it really is so it's crazy man i don't know this is just the beginning lord willing for for like everybody i mean i don't know dude i just love like that's what i'm saying like i don't feel worthy because like i'm just not like well we have the i don't know i have the best life ever dude like i wake up and just help people with videos like and make dude, courses that i love like, it's, it's so stressful, hard but yeah i feel it because it's also like for me it's hard for me like i know there's guys out there that will charge money for like to talk and advice it's so hard for me to do that to somebody when like someone dms me or like asks me questions like i just feel like i need to help people in a way yeah. I just want to help because I don't know, bro. I've always been like that. I've always been I'm like, dude, let me just help. Like, let me just help you. Yeah, dude. Let me. It's it's tough. Like, to we get to a point where you literally can't. Like, it's yeah. it's physically impossible for me to take calls with everyone. It just I would I would die because I just physically couldn't do it. But like, that's where I uh, we're so blessed to live in a time where we have the leverage of code and media. Mm. We can make this video and a million people could watch it. And we can help a million people just by us just shooting the crap on a Zoom, you know, during lunch. <laughs> it's like, exactly. Yeah, and it's but it it's tough though because I mean we have I have way too many DMs to ever possibly respond to, and so like it's some people I just physically can't, and so it like sucks. But that's why you make the free content, the free lead magnets, the free everything. So they yeah, can help if they want it. But it's sick, dude. It's sick, but yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, man. I was not like I said, I wasn't expecting to get on one of these. Cause like I said, <laughs> you, almost, you feel non-worthy, bro. It's like, oh, I'm only making this much. Like, 
It's not that crazy of a story. Just because, too, I've been at this stuff for so long. Yeah. Finally finding my groove, and you know it, too. It's like, dude, you go through all those waves where it's like, am I an idiot? Like, what am yeah. I doing? I've I've had so many months where I'm just like, I'm a loser, bro. Like, what, what am I doing in my life? Because <laughs> all my friends have normal jobs, and they're yeah. pretty successful. I'm not going to lie for our age. Like, my one buddy's an engineer for GE. My other buddy's going to be a lawyer, like. You know, I got a lot of successful friends and stuff, and I'm just like, dude, what am I doing? What am I doing, bro? Playing around on the internet. Yeah, and I know that's how a lot of them, like some of my friends look at it too. Like, they'll kind of like, kind of like, you know, throw shade in a way. Mm -hmm. Or what are you doing? Or like, what's your, like, when are you getting a job type of deal? And it's like, sometimes it's, it's very isolating. That's why I should have talked about it the call. Maybe you clip this part, but another great part of the community is just having a friend group in a way. Cause yeah. I don't have, I don't have many friends. Same, Drew. Copy it's, Elite is literally my friend group. Like yep. Copy Elite team is my best friends and Copy Elite is my friend group. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah. My friends are uh, like my buddy who owns a gym and I go to his That's gym sick. and we'll talk. Um, and then a couple people there, but I don't hang out on the weekend cause I work on the weekend. So I work on the yeah. weekend and then my days off are doing this and that's it. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't go out ever. So it's nice to have the community, bro. And you think it changes too? Like, like, I don't know. Like I was in grind mode for years and everybody thought I was stupid and I was making no money. I was broke. All my friends were doing better. And you think like, all right, when I make it, like when they know I have money, it's going to change. Then it's not. Then you're just the guy who, one, either people just think you got lucky or they just see you as like, oh, here comes the influencer guy who makes 70K a month. They see you as like that guy. And so – it's just, there's no way to win. It's just like, you're just doing what you're, you're doing. You just do what God's telling you to do, man. Like if that's get a job, get a job. But mm -hmm. if it's not like most people who are going to watch this video, it ain't right. Because you only call, you only find these videos if you're weird. Like no average person is going to watch a, an interview <laughs> like 40 minutes into an interview. You know? Yeah. If you're listening to this, you're a weirdo and that's okay. It's like, that's everybody's different, but you just got to go for it and don't, find community with, with the weirdos man yeah and i will say too like if you have to get, there's no shame in nine to fives bro yeah don't listen to the, the dorks on the internet that have everyone convinced you're a loser if you work a normal job <laughs> not a nor you're not bro look it's like i said like me i still live with my parents i'm 25 most 25 year olds would not be willing to do that and if yeah. you're not willing to do that go get a job so yeah. you can do that. and then work on this stuff on the side like it's like dude yeah ways like if you're not a loser if you get a job i have i have a part-time job at a winery okay like there you go you know we do like you got to make it work bro you know all these that's people like, jobs are for losers it's just like okay shut up bro and that's what i put in my latest like i made a video on how i escaped my nine to five or how i replaced my nine to five i don't think people understood that like i got a job for two years to figure this out to invest in courses like if you don't have time or money, you're fricked. So you got to like get something like you got to get some money to invest and then get time back. Like it's all about the balance. And if you got to work nine to five for a year, then bro, just do it. Like it's just a year. I know it sounds like a lot to a teenager, but it's really not that long. And if that sets you up with the ability to invest in stuff, the ability to actually have like, like I saved up where I could take three months and try to do something like that was my job. Or that was what I did. I failed. I had to get another editing job but like i worked mm -hmm. my job saved up and i saved it where i could spend i had two or three months of rent that could pay without having to work and i told my wife i was like as soon as you feel good about this like i'm doing it she's like no 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 one month she said all right do it before i take it back i was like i quit that day and i was like three months on the timer boom and i failed <laughs> but uh they ran it back a year later and it worked so it's just like yeah there That's is no get rich quick well. That's what I've been doing. Cause like me and my girlfriend are probably going to move in or get married very soon next year. Nice. Something's going to happen within the next year with that because she graduates grad school and then her lease is up in February at the time of recording this. It's September, almost nice. October. So it's like clock's ticking, but I mean, bro, if I have to get a job to make all this stuff work, that's what I'm going to do, bro. Yeah. Don't, do don't, don't be an idiot. All right. <laughs> Everyone on the internet is going to tell you to quit your job and go all in, bro. That is survivorship bias. Please yeah. understand that. That for every one of those dudes where it worked, 
1,000 people failed. A lot of people. Okay? Yeah. You guys need to understand that. It is survivorship bias. Don't be an idiot, okay? <laughs> like, no, don't... So even the people who it worked for, like, people think I would fit into the category if it worked. Bro, it didn't. <laughs> like, I, had to get, I had to go back and it didn't get work, it. Like... <laughs> like, it didn't work. <laughs> but that being said, look at me now. So, like, mm -hmm. it's just a testament to do not, do not give up. And be willing to do, like, just don't care what people think. Like, don't care what people on the internet think. Don't care what the gurus say. But also don't care, like, what your friends and family say. Just just do what you got to do. <laughs> and uh, take the path that you know God is, is calling you to take. So, well, I mean, I could talk for another hour, but I got to get ready for this group call. <laughs> I know. I could do the same, bro. It's, it's uh, I tell my friends this, too, like, that my buddy that owns a business or, like, some of the people I've met online. It's, like, the reason why we talk for so long is we don't have other people to talk to about That's this facts. stuff. So when we get the opportunity, that's all we want to do. Yeah, it's facts. Uh, my wife will never get that because she's like, why do you talk to these people for so long? I'm like, it's okay. I'm yeah, it's weird. Just... I might just throw this whole part in there if you don't care. Like, in I don't care. I didn't get like, – I don't think I got super personal. So, yeah, you're good. I don't think I did anything. I'll, I'll skim over it, but I just feel like this is real. Like when you have a real conversation, I, this is what people yeah. wouldn't put in, which is why I want to put it in. So, like, frick it. <laughs> yeah, this, it is, this is real-life entrepreneurship, guys. Yeah. I'm not a millionaire, and it's I've been at been at this for over three years. Okay, I'm, saying, I'm over eighteen. I'm not a millionaire. That's I'm twenty five years old. Okay, I went. Here's this. Get this. Get this, guys. I went to college for five years. I had a three point eight GPA. Hey, oh, everyone on the internet's telling me I'm a loser because I went to college. I say I, I got my piece of paper. It's in there, but I, it's in. The, I'm framing it in my room. office when I make it, bro. Bro, I, I frame mine and I haven't hung it because I'm just like, I don't even want it. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Anyways. Um, yeah, all dude. right, Trev. Appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, man. Good talking to you, as always. All right, talk later. See you, bro. See you, bro.